I, I would now like to introduce uh, the chair, the conference chair, a very important role, because we have so many good speakers that we might easily um, have difficulties in, in managing the whole day and, and connecting the different uh, pieces. Uh, Gero von, von Rando uh, is a important journalist, many of the German uh, speaking or the German based uh, uh, colleagues will know him of Die Zeit. Uh, he has a specific experience which is related to our conference because he was instrumental in building up Die Zeit online, so he, he knows about these subjects, but otherwise, of course, he was dealing with science subjects and now uh, with politics. And, and he will make sure that, uh, you know, the old Goethe saying uh, will remain valid during this conference because uh, the Germans, generally speaking, can endure injustice, but they cannot endure disorder. So we need order in this conference. And so, uh, uh, Gero von Rando, it's yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Straub, for your kind remarks, kind uh, introduction. So I have to play the role of, uh, uh, of order, law and order, well, of all, of all people. Um, okay. Um, when you talked about man-machine interaction, an article came to my mind, which I stumbled upon yesterday in the South China Morning Post. And I would like to read some some lines. It won't take very long. Um, Kiichi Ishikawa from the city of Yokosuka, southwest of Tokyo, uh, entered the SoftBank Corporation shop on Sunday morning, Kyodo News reported. Local police were called when 60-year-old Ishikawa flew into a rage at the attitude of a human member of staff. Instead of attacking the object of his anger, However, Ishikawa allegedly kicked and damaged one of the company's pepper humanoid robots. Described as a robot with a heart, SoftBank started selling the devices in June, primarily as human companions. The company says Pepper is able to recognize emotions in humans and is programmed to respond with its own emotions. Over time, the... Um, Robots developers claim Pepper will establish its own personality. And while the Android is designed to read emotions, the designers may need to program future versions to predict outbursts of violence and equip them with a way of swiftly getting out of a tight situation. Ishikawa has admitted causing damage to the robot by kicking it. Police said the android appears to have suffered internal damage <laughs> as it moves more slowly. <laughs> so concerning the, the man-machine interaction, it is a whole field unexplored, and uh, I hope uh, concerning that field as well, we, are, we will get uh, a bit more insight during the next two days. But now it's time for a political <laughs> keynote. Um, a European, from a European point of view, Today's and tomorrow's topics are profoundly European. Mr. Marku Makula from Finland has chosen the title Towards a Smart Europe, which might sound kind of strange these days, but at least it makes me even more curious. Particularly because uh, Marku Makula was elected president of the European Committee of the Regions in February 2015. Innovation in Europe is the grand issue of his remarkable, remarkable political and international career. So I, happily, I give the floor to you, Mr. Marco. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's really an honor to be here. And especially, I'm looking forward to the discussions during today, and I have a chance uh, to be partly here tomorrow as, as well. We've uh, got a very good introduction to the uh, 
kind of topic, but uh, highlighting really the human dimension on this, uh, which we can say as well it's crucial in, in the, uh, this topic, Smart Europe. And uh, I'm uh, not going to be very philosophical, but I try to be very kind of practical. So what are the elements that we need to bring in? What needs to happen within the next uh, years to come? Easy to start with this is uh, actually yesterday. I was uh, listening to the uh, John claude Juncker's uh, State of the Union speech, where he actually spent uh, half of his time, practically more than half of the originally planned time, on, on talking on refugees and the general atmosphere in Europe. However, uh, the key messages were uh, quite clear that what, what is really going on. And as we remember, so there was a very clear kind of uh, policy declaration uh, ten key priorities when this uh, new commission started uh, a bit less than a year ago. And that declaration was approved uh, in, in concrete votings by the parliament. So now it's, it's uh, easy to say that, that this is kind of a uh, strategic agenda uh, and as well as Juncker stated, it's still really the concrete contract uh, uh, between uh, the Commission and the Parliament. However, what I was missing on, on that, so that uh, uh, we need to see that uh, Europe, especially the political leaders of Europe, have spent now several years on uh, uh, combat combating uh, these acute uh, crises, especially now lately Greece and now the migration. Uh, however, our uh, priority should always be, and especially now seeing what's happening with the globalization and digitalization, our political priority should much stronger really be to create uh, a stronger European economy, find new income and tackle the societal challenges. We should focus on this as our shared European project uh, supported by our culture of entrepreneurship because that's stronger and stronger, more important and more important for the next years to come. And when I'm talking about European projects, so it's not just the project of the political leadership, it's the project of uh, European citizens, but especially our uh, industries and our educational institutions, our research institutions, because we need to move faster to tackle these societal challenges with the, uh, uh, more growth, because growth, that is the only way that we can tackle these societal uh, priorities. Its growth is as well the only way to develop our structural capacity of managing and overcoming crisis. How we are then, uh, uh, from the region's perspective, uh, tackling these. So, uh, the European Committee of the Regions, we are a, a kind of constitutional, European uh, constitutional body, one of the EU institutions. However, we are not uh, at the level of the Parliament or, or the Commission as, as a direct decision-making body. We are 350 members, mayors, city mayors, regional mayors, regional presidents, and so on, coming from all parts of Europe, coming regularly together to uh, plenaries and to different committee meetings in Brussels, and uh, there putting our strong efforts on uh, uh, creating uh, the joint European uh, avenues uh, to find the new solutions for these burning issues. Um, as uh, president, with my role, jointly with uh, my first vice president, uh, so we form a two-person team after two years, so practically two and a half year term, and then we change the places. So he comes, the president, I'll be coming, 
the first vice president. So it's a five-year term altogether that we are operating on this role. And that's why I have strongly chosen the way that during these uh, years uh, my message is strongly innovation, startups and entrepreneurship. So kind of changing the mindset in Europe. These, uh, what we defined uh, uh, by our plenary agreed uh, five-year term policy priorities uh, now just recently in June, so they are kind of policy guidelines uh, and focusing especially on the number one fresh start for the European economy, creating jobs and sustainable growth in cities and regions to provide a better quality of life for citizens. And then we go deeper on that, bring the different elements, strongly focusing as well what is the fifth one, the Europe of citizens, and especially on forward-looking partnerships, meaning partnerships between everyone. So especially what we need to do is so to kind of co-create our future activities so that we use the best resources what we have. I have here a set of slides. I'll go through some of them very quickly, kind of painting the frame of this uh, political message, but as well so uh, will definitely by the organizers make these available through the net and we'll add there a few links to some of the key documents as well so that you can, if someone wants to go deeper on some of those uh, special issues, that will be made available. Uh, starting with what I already said, that the European mindset and change on that. So that is crucial, but that's the, the most difficult uh, to make to happen. What we have said, not just uh, because we represent the, the, the regions and cities, but because we see that every week, I hear that every week in my discussions with the commissioners so that they need this active uh, kind of bottom-up movement. This is my words, or the Committee of the Regions words nowadays, so that uh, a bottom-up movement is needed to stimulate the targeted investments. Uh, 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 intangible investments, uh, concrete, physical investments, and so on. And, and so that through this we can really start uh, moving faster. We define there uh, some of the key instruments for that digital single market. It's a joint effort through, through Europe. We'll hear a lot more on, on the instruments inside that during uh, these two days here. The other one, which I put now on a special role here, is the smart specialization. That's a kind of human uh, uh, <coughs> region-focused uh, 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 instrument so that every region in Europe has defined their uh, smart specialization priorities. It's a regional um, strategy uh, based on smart specialization, innovation strategy. It's, it's especially focused on as an economic uh, change agenda. So it's not covering all aspects of regional policy, but it's covering where the region defines they should be focusing at. And build on that, then organizing more uh, collaboration with the others, these European partnerships, which are the instruments for uh, reaching the, the desired results. What does this uh, mean in practice? So kind of uh, jump to that, so I, I quoted the text that I wrote for the Luxembourg uh, presidency because we collaborate regularly, regularly with the, the heads of uh, states uh, when they operate as a presidency uh, countries. Now Luxembourg, uh, one of their priorities uh, has been this cross-border collaboration. What can Europe do? How to use better the financing? How to move on? with the investment package. But as well, we operate already now with the coming Dutch presidency next spring. One of the very focus areas is the, the renewing of the urban agenda, the role of cities, how that can be used as an instrument on change. 
and then we move on already working, actually have been fixing already with the government of Slovakia, uh, the, the special summit in the beginning of July next year, focusing on integrating energy, transport, digitalization, and integrating that more on this change of mindset. How can we get more out of this? Uh, a bit like, not the theory, but the graphic showing on that, that uh, we have a certain question marks because this, what there are uh, in, in yellow, uh, the FC, that's the strategic investment uh, uh, package. Then uh, ESIF is the structural and investment funds, the cohesion funding. Semester is the European governance structure with the renewing the policy on putting detailed actions on a member state level. And then this Horizon 2020, the research book. So but what kind of integrates them is that the action needs more and more to be on a regional level. There is this RIS-3, the regional innovation strategy based on smart specialization, focusing especially uh, the role of cities in getting this urban agenda to be a real concrete instrument, and then smart, sustainable human city activities, where again, the digitalizations and the benefit out of that are crucial. What are then, I have added there the question marks, and with the slide set, I will have a few of the answers on that as well. And our target, now looking what needs to be encouraging that bottom-up movement, it is to move the focus on more on intellectual capital, renewal capital, increase the renewal capital of the cities, and that comes from the human beings. From the kind of traditional funding, physical infrastructure, and from that to funding knowledge co-creation infrastructure, uh, to bridges uh, between cultures, uh, channels uh, 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 for the flow of ideas, roads for mental mobility, and the free movement of knowledge and innovation across borders and barriers. So we need to be more open, more target-oriented, and more collaborative. Um, I uh, quoted, uh, took here three pictures from a commission, uh, uh, special commission-funded exercise where the regions collaborate uh, and where they have defined the vision and scenarios uh, for the European uh, territory towards 2050. So, but just pointing out that they're the, the key elements there, so they are the regions, they are the cities, because the action is there. Whatever is in the discussion up on the, the uh, political level in Brussels, that, that does not bring the results. But there we need to remind that we need to encourage the cities and regions, city councils, regional councils, policymakers, to look both opening up European markets to global competition, but as well as uh, what is the, how to get the best uh, knowledge in active use, how to increase the accessibility to open up regional potentials. Richard Straub talked about the new opportunities. So we need to start seeing those. But then it is what is on the third uh, uh, graphics there, that, that uh, how then the different regions, so those with the red circle or the, the uh, uh, green dot or whatever, so how they start to doing uh, these activities in good partnerships. And that's where they are using this cohesion funding much more than they, they, because in the previous years, it was not even allowed to use that for the international collaborators. Now it's recommended. So to please use that, and that's where these spearheads of the, uh, the smart specialization regional strategies play a crucial role. So regions which share the joint interests, so need to do much more uh, jointly. Um, a few texts there, I don't go in detail, but uh, just to want to mention that here, especially the collaboration between industry and universities plays a crucial role. Not to forget that the part of some of the universities need to be very forward-looking science university doing uh, uh, exemplary uh, research, integrating that then for the benefit of everyone. And then we need more integration, more synergy between research, education, and innovation, focusing more on the learning 
again coming very uh, closely to the topic of Ely. Uh, and then uh, with that, so uh, divide, closing the innovation divide, that's crucial. There are a few key points, so we need to focus much on so what we can, with the simple wording, talk about innovation hubs. How to do, organize that collaboration. We have a lot of good plans, yeah, but now it's time to move to action, experiment, uh, uh, rapid prototyping, piloting these activities. But again, what I encourage, do that uh, together. How then to renew the regional policy to be based on this uh, uh, smart specialization? I have started to add that if we have the investment pack package there up, up there on the, the left hand uh, up corner and the cohesion funding. So there it needs to be both based collaborating on ecosystems. How to have more of this uh, tackling the complexity of the ecosystems moving on through the public-private uh, people partnerships. We have there, when we look at the investment package and the governance system, there we have the digital single market and how to speed up that development. And then when we look at cohesion funding and research funding, this needs to be going much more hand in hand compared to what they are doing at. And there the focus is uh, new innovations and them actively impl implement. And finally, again, thinking about the ELIX role. So yeah, increasing the awareness, what is knowledge economy? How we can build this stairway to excellence? Joint... Uh, uh, <coughs> Action agenda, how to create those. So we'll provide you with a, a special link to this uh, book. Actually, it looks that, the, that either the link or at least the picture of the book uh, orchestrating regional innovation ecosystem, that's in the ELIC annual uh, report as well. And now taking from what uh, the commissioner Moedas in charge of science, research and innovation. So what he has strongly given the message is the power is shifting from nations to cities. Start thinking that. You see that definitely practically all around in Europe. Some countries more, some a bit less. But the cities need to be changing their mindset as well. They are enablers of new kind of service collaboration. Uh, a few slides, some concrete examples. Uh, this June we organized, EU organized a conference on open innovation 2.0 sharing the responsibilities, finding partnerships, and uh, they're using already a lot of digitalized regional information modeling, place-based activities, how to build on, how to integrate that to digitalization industry 4.0. We had a nice teams working there. We continued the actions or the doubling declarations, two previous uh, EU conferences on these open innovations were in Dublin and now in ESPO, how that is now then on an implementation process, action process. And I have a few slides about the examples of those, how the teams worked uh, for three days and then followed with the two days with the conference collaboration. And one of the examples is so that, that we have the special local activity, West Metro extension from downtown Helsinki to the West, with the new places for 70,000 people to live and doubling the number of jobs on that area. So what happens there, how we are seeing that as a corridor, not an investment on, on, on the Metro line only, but what happens around that. That's the big thing. And as well, another, we discussed the topic yesterday evening during the dinner, so that uh, one of the teams worked on that welearners.org. So how we can have the smart citizens now applying that to, the, to this issue of refugees and migrants. That could be a very crucial role using the modern technology in the educational aspects, because that's what all those migrants need. They need to be able to learn the language wherever they are going to locate and the cultures and, and linkages with the local people. And finally, then I'll sum up so that, that when we do this systematically, we need more this teaming on each of those pairs, teaming European level and new networking culture. And there I have added these elements 
which are more crucial. And then I just want to point out B there, visibility activities, visualized activities, and that's where more many of you are really experts, and number D, experimenting with these ex ec ecosystems. So uh, instead of planning and planning, we need to start demonstrations, experiment, and move from that and take that in concrete use. What we need as well to do is we need how we orchestrate the activities. Please have a look at, in a bit detail later on on these slides because we've spent a lot of time in planning what does this mean, how we operate with that digitalized innovation platform in concrete terms between peoples and between organizations. And there, what is there at the bottom? This is enabled through orchestration. There we need people whose role is to be architects, preachers, curators, conductors. And the next slide includes a few words defining a bit. So what do we mean with the architect, preacher, conductor, and curator? And they work as, as a team. So it's much more advanced way to operate. And that's where, actually, I think tomorrow as well, with the uh, AXI uh, type working sessions, I think people will go on to get at least a few ideas of what does this mean in practice. And this is my summary slide. Just think about the message, the title, Mindset, Pioneers, and Scalability. Thank you very much. Thank you.